Okay, I'm going to try to clarify what this factoring is doing here, but let's start with something we know how to factor, like the number 36. But what if it was 36 plus, um, let's say, 8? And if I wanted to take something out of both of these, I could divide it out as a common factor. So when I think about 36, if I break that down into prime factors, I'm ending up with two threes and two twos. So two times two is four, four times three is 12, and 12 times three is 36. So let's do the same thing to eight. Notice every time I divide on this side, I'm dividing by a prime number. And I end when I end with one. For the eight, I got three twos. Over here, I have two twos. So a common factor that I could take out of both of these is four. And this could be rewritten as four times nine plus two because I divided a four out of the 36 to get the nine. And if I divide four out of eight, I get left with two. <clears throat> the same thing is happening, no Lola. The same thing is happening when we're factoring out <clears throat> um, and looking for the greatest common factor of things with variables. And I'm gonna take you back to what we talked about yesterday with this. If I'm multiplying x times x, those two invisible ones got added together to become x squared. This one we found was negative 18 x to the fourth because we took this and we divided 2x out of it and we were left with this. Well, we're doing a very similar thing here. But what I need to know is I need to have a list of what's in everything that's in this, all of the pieces, and all of the pieces in here so I can pull out or factor out what they have in common. So let's just break this down. 8x squared y and negative 16x to the third y squared. Well, we just factored 8 over here, didn't we? 8 factored is 2 times 2 times 2. x squared would be x times x and a y. For negative 16, let's take that over here and factor it out. Well, first thing I'm going to factor out is a negative 1, and then I'm dealing with a positive 16. Divide by 2 until I get down to a 1 at the bottom. What I have here is four twos, which makes sense because 16 is 1 more multiplied 2 from 8. So I'm going to have a negative 1, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, because I've got all of these 2s. There's three x's on this one, and there's two y's. And now I'm looking between these two lists at what is my greatest common factor. And I'm going to divide that out. There's three twos here, so I can only take these three twos. There's two x's here, so I take two of these x's. And there's a single y here, so I can take a single y from down here. So everything in our first term is being factored out. And that's why in front of the parentheses on that Desmos slide you asked about, you're seeing this. What's left here is the invisible one. That's how a one ends up there. Because when I go back to check this, I'm gonna distribute and multiply this. And this whole term being multiplied by this gets me back to that original part of it. I have a negative one here times a two. So that's why it's a negative two and an X and a Y. So what's left inside of the parentheses up here when we factor this out is everything that didn't get circled because the things that were circled were the common factors, the greatest common factor. 
So I hope that helps clarify your question and let me know what help you need next, okay?